Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 36. It's on equipotential lines, which are going to be lines of equal electric potential. And so imagine we have a positive charge right here. If you were to draw the electric field, what would that look like? Again, by convention, we're going to move the arrows away like that. And so what's an equipotential line? It's going to be connecting areas in that electric field that have similar potential. And so if we look at these arrows, you can see they're changing their gradient according to the strength of the electric field. Well, this arrow and that arrow and that arrow all look about the same color. And so what we could do is we could connect those with equipotential lines or isolines is what they're called. If we were to take a negative charge like this, we're going to have all of those electric field lines pointing in. And so our equipotential lines would look like that. What if we had a positive and a negative charge? What would the electric field look like? Well, we'd have to combine that of the negative and the positive. So you'd have to do a little bit of vector addition, but we'd get electric field lines that would look like this. Where are those uh, equipotential lines going to be? Well, they're going to be a little more difficult to draw, and they would look something like that. And so equipotential lines, in the last video we talked about contour lines that show lines of equal elevation and therefore equal gravitational potential energy. Well, we're going to use that as an analogy to explain what's really going on if we're looking at areas of equal uh, electric potential. And so if you have an electric field, and we have these electric field arrows representing the electric field, an isoline is going to be lines of equal electric potential. And so equal potential, and that's why we call them equal potential lines. And so one thing you should note is that they're always going to be perpendicular to the electric field. And so if I look at, for example, this electric field right here, you can see it's pointed in the down direction and we can see it's totally perpendicular to that and to that and to that. It's always going to be perpendicular to the lines of the electric field. And so if we take a test particle, if we take a positive particle and we're moving it against the electric field, remember, we're going to have to do a certain amount of work to move it in that direction. But a take home message you should get is if we take a test particle like this and we move it along the ISO line, since the potential energy is never changing, it requires no work to do that. It's kind of like uh, walking along a mountainside, but you're staying at the same elevation. Now, you might be spending energy to move in the horizontal, but you're not spending any energy to move in the other direction. And so if we've got two parallel plates like this, we've drawn the electric fields, and we've talked about that, do you remember how the potential is going to differ as we move across that gradient? Um, well, again, it's not. And so we would draw those equal potential lines like this. In other words, it's going to be the same slope. It doesn't matter where we put it, it's going to be the same potential difference between the two sides, as long as they're close enough together in relation to the length of the overall parallel plates. And so you can think of this almost like a uh, inclined plane. And so since these lines are equally spaced, then the slope is going to be consistent from the left side to the right side. We're going in the direction of the gradient. And so if we were to take a ball and put it at the top, it's going to experience the same potential as a ball that we put it farther down. And likewise, if we're going to move it up, we're going to have to do work in this direction to move it that, that direction, but it's going to be consistent amount of work as we move up. And so this is a consistent electric field, and therefore we have consistent equipotential lines. So now let's look at an electric field that isn't consistent throughout. So imagine we put a charge right here in the middle. So we're going to put a positive charge here in the middle. If we were to draw equipotential lines, they're going to look like concentric circles. But again, the closer we get to that test charge, we're going to see an increase. This is that inverse square of the radius, Coulomb's law. And so if I were to represent this three-dimensionally, and this is my best try, um, I drew a bunch of concentric circles like this. And now I'm going to simply lift those concentric circles to the potential that they're at and I'm going to project it like that. So what we get is a three-dimensional progression and really what we're showing is a topographic profile. The closer we get to that charge, the higher the potential energy is going to be. And so you can think of putting a uh, test charge here on the side of it is like putting a ball on the side of a hill. It's going to move down and so it's going to fall at a faster rate when it's close to that positive charge. Let's say we try a negative charge. We're going to get a similar relationship like this. If we were to graph those concentric circles again in three dimensions and we project them, it's going to be like a giant hole. And so if you put a test charge on the side of that, where is it going to go? It's going to spiral into the inside of that. What if we had something like this, though? If you're given a bunch of electric fields and you have to figure out where those equipotential lines are, well, one thing that you should always remember is if the, the equipotential lines are going to act um, 
perpendicular to the electric field. And so what I've done is gone through on each of these arrows and drawn a, a simple straight line that's perpendicular to that arrow. And if we get rid of the arrows, you can start to envision where these equipotential lines are going to be. And so if I show you where they actually are, they would look like that. So we're going to really have, if you think about it, let me turn this sideways, we're going to have a mountain on one side and a valley on the other side. And so what would happen if we're going to put a positive charge right here, it's going to clearly move in the ne negative direction. Or if we have a charge here, we're going to have to do a lot of work to move it in that direction like that. And so did you learn to determine the structure of isolines? Again, it's going to be lines of equal electric potential. Did you learn to predict the structure of those equal potential lines if you're given the electric field? Again, always remember that we're drawing perpendicular lines. And then finally, do you know how that's going to affect a charge? So if we put a charge inside here, it's clearly going to move in that direction. But if we move along that equal potential line, since we're not changing the electric potential, we're not doing any work. And I hope that was helpful.